Hey guys, how's it going? Travis, to your room. I'm doing a live. We can hear you on the floor. To your room. It's okay, Nestor. Sorry, I had to banish my children. Oh, how's everybody doing? Sorry I'm late. The mailman arrived right at 6.30 today, and we had to open up new Halloween stuff. So, house is going crazy right now. How's everybody doing? Hey, baking. Good to see you. How's it going? Let me tell everybody on. Discord, we're going live. All right. Let's go live on TikTok and on Messenger. Y'all be sure and tap the screen and share the live so that everybody knows that we're on. Hey, Lester. I have um, another intigmatary question we can do tonight that I didn't get done on Monday that was a um, case. And then the rest of the cases are um, immunization cases, actually. So they're cases, but they're dealing with immunizations. So I have some of those. I just finished a TikTok on bradyocephalic and lower extremity catheter placement and how to find your answer. Hopefully everybody's seeing that TikTok, but I did post it on YouTube. So just in case TikTok has taken forever to publish it, thank you for the, uh, the pumpkins. Um, just in case... Just in case you guys um, can't see it on TikTok yet, sometimes they take forever to post videos. Um, let me see if they've posted it. Um, yeah, it's there. It's posted. But anyway, it is on YouTube too. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's there. You passed, Sandy. I saw that just a few minutes ago in our Discord. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. That is great. In case y'all didn't know, Sandy just found out today that she passed her CPC exam. Where was she at? I know somewhere in here in our Discord. She let us know. So I was like, oh, oh, yeah, maybe she did it in the room where, yeah. Who have we helped? I have my things low, lowered. Hold on. Oh, gosh. No, got to hit that. There we go. Who have we helped? Yeah. She posted it right in there in Discord. Woohoo. So we got congratulations. So that's awesome. I hope I made a little bit of difference in easing your stress for that CPC exam. Now you're one of the uh, one of the coders. I think that um, I had a little made a little difference in in getting you to pass. So that's that's so cool. I think that I've got. I don't know how many of you now in there. I've posted everybody's name that I've ever found that has told me that they passed in the year and a half in that little group. And uh, there's so many. It's so neat to see. Hey, Twinkle, how's it going? Hey, Sunshine. Awesome. So glad I made a difference. That's that's all I really want to do here, guys, is to make a difference. I don't know how to get off the filter. I'm sitting here trying to figure this out. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, huh? What am I doing? How do I get off the Halloween filter? I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how I got it in there. And it keeps saying no faces detected. Well, yeah, 
got to show y'all the books. Anyway, I got some new subscribers on YouTube subscription, and y'all got some old um, of the some replays of the um, workshops available for you guys who subscribe to the YouTube channel, and for anybody that subscribes for the TikTok channel. If you just message me and want a TikTok on a specific subject or a particular question you don't know how to do, did I do that? Am I hitting those things away? I don't know. Um, then um, I can make you TikToks. What did Lavy see? Thank you, Jen. I gave my test last Saturday and I passed. Yay! First try, and you have been in here, Lavy, watching and participating in some of these uh, lives lately, too. I noticed that your name has been popping up and answering a ton of questions, and even when you get them wrong, I've stopped and, and made notes to you specifically and showed you what little differences you can do to get it right the next time. So that is awesome. Congratulations. I'm so happy. Yay. That's awesome. Congratulations. I attended the AAPC career tomorrow thing. Yep. Booth is ready. Yay. That's awesome. I saw that AAPC was uh, looking to hire something on their Facebook just earlier today. Where was I at? Yeah, I was at AAPC and they posted that they needed or were wanting to hire um, risk adjusters. So that's pretty awesome. I know we had somebody in our Discord asking about getting on with Optum and doing a risk adjustment for them because uh, they just passed and how it was a little bit lower pay than what they were wanting and they have bad reviews, marginal reviews online as far as working for them. But I tell you, if you can work risk adjustment for one year through Optum online at home, working from home for one year, then you can basically write your own ticket. You can get a job anywhere. I took a picture today of somebody who had um, was trying to encourage someone who did not pass, um, and she said her friend didn't pass the first three times, and now she did pass, and now she makes 110 a year just risk adjusting. So, I mean, if it's one year of working for Optum for 22 an hour to 25 an hour, whatever it is from home, you get your year under your belt, then you can go on and move on and work for medical companies. They really do want risk adjusters, and all you need is your CPC to do that. So don't give up. Yep, yep, yep. I tutored somebody Tuesday who was on their eighth attempt. She just found me, but, or she just finished her eighth attempt. She's going to go for her ninth, and she just found me. So um, she got some tutoring right away, right away and, and now she's doing her, um, all my YouTube videos. So hopefully I can help her pass. So she's not the, the biggest number I've seen, I've seen 11 times before, before the people find me and then, and then I help them pass. So don't give up. It's not you. It's the exam and the psychological stuff that goes along with it. The, from the way they write the questions, they use psychologists to write the questions. So, um, it's all meant to confuse you if you don't know their specific way of answering the questions and what they're looking for. So anyway, yep, absolutely. Risk adjusting is a great way. Yep. Yep. I'm making good money my first year doing it. Great job. Great info, Smith. Thank you so much. Hey, go cart. Good to see you. Melody, she Took her exam last Saturday, got close, got to a 63. Yeah, don't give up. I hope you um, hang in there, Melody. It's, it's, it's really challenging. Peace is doing risk adjustment 
but you want to take your CPC, awesome. Yep, you can get more money doing it with your CPC for sure. Your My notes helped you a ton too, lady. That's awesome. I'm so glad. I mean, I hate for y'all to pay for anything for me, um, but if you need the page-by-page -page notes for the CPT book and stuff, um, this book is empty. They're there for you. Um, but hopefully I can show you how to make your own notes. Um, like, I've got so many ideas for my 2023 notes, but my 2022 notes are, are really wonderful. My um, Appendix L that I was just showing you in my blank book, my Appendix L had a whole bunch of info in it. I went through it and even added in radiology codes that you could use with these, with the Brady's radio um, cephalic even adding CPT codes to these is what's going to be for my 2023 my 2022 I just numbered them whether they were second beyond where's your starting point but for 2023 I'm adding in the CPT code so that's going to be even more helpful for you guys when y'all start working on these and uh, doing these I started a little bit with some of the numbers but my notes only had those those things so I'm always trying to come up with something else that will be better for next year to come so they're here if you need them but I like to show you guys what I do and then y'all can go in and I'm not inventing anything, but you can figure out which ones, which CPT codes go with each um, catheter placement. If it was placed here, it just takes a lot of investigative work. But anyway, you can do it too. You can make the notes all by yourself if you just watch the videos and I show you what to do. But that's awesome. Good feedback to know. <laughs> Let's see. Hello, I man. Hello. Gracie. Hey, Riva. Mermaid. Good to see you. I'm doing well. Fish says it's really easy. I think she's still talking about risk adjustment. Oh, gosh. I wish I could get off this filter. It's very distracting for me. How long to review? It depends on on you thanks emily for the subscription just message me what you want me to make you a tiktok on and i'll make you a tiktok on it um thank you ciara for the follow um peace if you want tutoring that's fine my calendar is at medicalcodingbygen.com um I'm kind of booked up right now everybody waited till the end of the year and everybody wants tutoring right now but um, definitely calendars there. Keep checking, see if your thing opens up. Um, just go to, I'm trying to get it to come up, medicalcodingbygen.com and then go to the booking tab, booking right there. I do have a workshop, which is very much like a one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We're going to do it on Zoom on November 6th. It's only $10, and it's three hours of nothing but practice questions. I won't be talking and visiting and sharing life stories. I'll go question by question and show you what's been on the exam the last 60 days, if I have any new information updated. Um, and um, we'll go through... Um, 60 to 70 questions on the digestive system and neuro. We're doing neuro neurology and digestive system questions on those days. It'll do ICD-10, E&M codes with it, hip picks codes with it, and of course CPT with those. And it's only $10. And if you can't attend, if you do pre-purchase, you do get the access to the Zoom and the replay password so you can just replay it. Now, my YouTube subscribers do get access to workshops, but they're usually the workshops that have already been out and paid for for at least three months, and then I'll release them on YouTube for the subscribers to have access to. So the most recent workshops don't go out on YouTube right away, but um, they eventually get there. 
All my E&M workshops are already on there. The cardiology is on there. So if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is like four something a month, then you get access to those workshops anyway that I did on the past. What's the difference between ICD-10 and ICD-11? Sandy, great question. So I don't know how much you know about all the, um, where we get these CPT codes from and who writes all this stuff, but every other country beside the United States has um, health, health uh, coverage for all their citizens so they can take care of their population as a whole and cut down on diseases and stuff. So um, they are the front runners. They are the ones who invented um, CPT codes and ICD-10 codes so they could track their populations. Um, the World Health Organization, of course, gathers information from all countries and... Um, we can track pandemics and other things like that, too. Well, all the other countries have evolved because into ICD-10, 11, I mean, because if you notice, ICD-10 is over a decade old, and it does not do any joints, and it doesn't do uh, combination procedures or diagnoses very well at all. It does one code for diabetes, one code for uh, hypertension, and then one code for uh, a transplant. Well, it's very um, outdated way of coding stuff. And, and of course, um, England and other countries have updated the ICD-10 to ICD-11, which adds a lot more um, diagnosability to things instead of us having to just pick non-specific codes for a lot of situations. They have gotten super specific, like down to a cartilage on which toe gets its own code. The codes are longer, um, where right now our codes are six digits long. These are going to start out 12 digits long. And they're going to go on from there up to 21 digits long. But we're going to have multiple comorbidities all in one code. And um, it's going to be cool. but And it's going to be able to track things a lot more specifically instead of non-specific you know, heart disease. It's going to get real specific on those heart diseases. So, and bones that are broken and, um, joints and things. So, um, it's, it's going to be fun. I remember when ICD-9 switched over to ICD-10, many coders just dropped out. They were afraid of it, didn't want to change. They love their, um, three digit codes and were not going to go to six digits and they just quit. So I doubled my income when we went from ICD-9 to ICD-10 just by simply pretending that I knew something about it and asking for double my income if you want me to come in and fix your stuff. So that happened. I guarantee you there will be opportunities if you start gathering information now on ICD-11 and just storing it on your personal computer. AAPC has already put out blogs about it. Just go to their knowledge center and type in ICD-11 and you'll see their articles. They're already telling you specifically what the code is for insulin dependent diabetes versus in, um, uh, diabetes type 2. They have a great article that shows you what the ICD-10 code is and then now what the ICD-11 code is. And they've already got it figured out for you. So then you can save all that information, put it in one PDF file in your computer, and then don't say anything to your employers or coworkers. And then when D-Day shows up, which is supposed to be in 2023 when we switch over to ICD-11, because every other country, including World Health Organization, is already using those codes. And because we send our data to them from an old system, ICD-11, 
10, then they have to crosswalk it into ICD-11 and it doesn't crosswalk work very well because it's so nonspecific. We can't measure up to the data that we're sending to track um, pandemics or anything else that's going on. Um, so it it is set to go into effect in 2023, but I guarantee you the United States will put it off like they did ICD-10 for as long as possible. So I assume within two to three years it will be go into effect, but by that time you'll have a lot of coders just freak out at the possibility of having to pick ICD-10 codes down 21 digits long, and they're going to want to not do it, and they're going to quit. But that leaves a lot of opportunity for you people that are not afraid to just gather up any information you find, store it, and then act like you know what you're doing and uh, ask for more money. Totally recommend y'all doing that. You're in CCS. My study group on Discord does have your own CCS room. So just in case, um, on my website at Meckle Coding by Jen, if you go to the social media tab right there, You'll see our Facebook group, our TikToks, of course, the YouTube page. But right here where it says Join Discord, that's my free study group, which is this app right here that you can download. And all the CCS people have their own practice room where I put in advice, practice questions, and things like that for you guys, too. So we have risk adjustment, auditors, COC, you name it, it's here. All kinds of information here that if y'all need anything, including practice code, study base, uh, buddies, and cases, examples of those, and practice questions for CPC. We just, um, you know, if you're taking a course and you don't understand a particular question and you want to post it here and get advice, you can do that 24-7. Somebody will be there to answer the question for you and tell you why the answer is what it is. We just ask that we know all the questions are copyrighted by whoever wrote them. Please don't steal them and claim them as your own and then resell them over the internet. That's not cool. Don't post them over the internet. All these questions are either written by AAPC or, or any other entity out there um, that helps out. Just We just use them as a study purpose and to make sure that we all pass our exams here. On my um, page, too, there is, um, if you hover over somewhere, I don't oh, the additional educator. So if you need additional help from other people, if I'm not your cup of tea or you've watched every one of my YouTube videos and you need more help, I've got a list here of other educators that are in the field that can help, too. The Cody Guild is a lady that is super advanced. She's past CPC. So if you're into something super billing or super complex into RAB V codes and all that other stuff that I refuse to learn, she's really good. And then uh, we've got some other TikTokers and Pocket Prep that I recommend that has 500 extra AAPC CPC exam questions. If you've taken your exam and you failed and you need a new set of questions to do and you've done all the ones that AAPC sells on their website, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and you still can't pass, I, then I recommend Pocket Prep. I got their website right there. But there are a ton of other people that also have questions that they sell on their own. I don't sell any questions yet. <laughs> I haven't made up any of my own. Um, there's just so many out there that other people do that that are perfectly good for you guys. Um, but maybe if I didn't spend so much time teaching for free, which I love to do more than anything else, you know, being here six hours a week is great. That way y'all get to get hands on on these questions with an instructor. And I think that's the most that I could do for you guys to really, truly help you guys. But if you've got any questions you want me to go over in a live, please send them to me anytime and I will put, do them during the live. Um, 
or put them in a workshop for you and go over them. Whatever you want me to do. Uh, there's my email address, medicalcodingbyjen, gmail.com. Y'all can email me questions. I don't know how that is happening, but I wish I could get off this thing. Okay. Um, do you have a class for beginners? I don't sell any classes and I haven't made any classes. I do all my classes here for free for you guys. I'm a little weird. So I teach um, here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 630 Arizona time zone for free. And I teach from the exam point of view, not from a coder's coding point of view. I'm here to teach you how to answer questions on the certification exams, no matter whether you're CCS or CPC or whatever, or um, the other place, the AH, whatever. Um, but I teach you how to take the exam and pass from the exam's point of view. So that's what I do. I repost all these TikToks where I teach you how to answer the questions and find the answers um, on YouTube. And you can rewatch those whenever you want. But I don't sell a course in coding. I've looked at some of that. I just don't know whether I'd have time to, between real job and tutoring and preparing for all these three lives and my three sons and my mom and my kitty cats. It's like, oh man, I don't know. Maybe if I didn't sleep, I could make a course, but I don't know. I haven't done that yet. I know I need to, I guess, or at least organize my videos into just E&M stuff or just urinary. I don't know. I need to be more organized and then do plainer videos, but I haven't done that. <laughs> I see the 11 harder. I hope not. I hope it's not any harder just because the numbers are longer. I think I will be happier because they're going to be more specific. I mean, sometimes it's really hard to code like URI with RSV with sepsis. It's like, which one goes first? You've got a lot of that sequencing stuff. This is going to get rid of a lot of that sequencing because it's all going to be in one code. So it, it could be beneficial. It could be great. Let's hang out. Don't think, don't think bad of it yet. If I can't attend the workshop, yep, yep, yep. When you do pay for the $10, it's okay if you can't attend on Sunday. I know Sundays are family day or Costco day, whatever you got to do, that's perfectly fine. Um, you'll get about an hour after it ends the replay link with the password so you can review it at any time. Even if you can only participate in the first hour and then you got to go, you'll get the log on and password. So no worries. Hey, MK, how's it going? I know. I don't know how to get the background off. Today's video is about cases, and we are going to do uh, another integumentary case that I didn't get to Monday, and we're going to do immunization cases. All brand new questions I've not showed you guys. My boss was supposed to have retired by the time ICD-10 showed up. Well, I guarantee you they'll have to, they'll want to retire before ICD-11. I already researching. Great. Perfect. Do we need any degree for coding job after we pass CPC? No, you don't, MK. Now, if you wanted to do hospitalization, risk adjusting, like manage the entire hospital department for billing, what I would recommend is after you get your CPC, is take one class a semester and have the hospital reimburse you for that class and eventually get your uh, bachelor's or associates in science or any sort of business administration of any sort. That could booster your um, resume and make you move up the chain and you could be a hot dog driving to work 
on the few days that you actually go into the hospital in your BMW and running an entire billing department. If you want to be that woman that walks down the hall in those heels, because everybody else is in tennis shoes and Crocs, <laughs> but you're the one in the high heels making everybody nervous when you walk down the hallway and you're making the mega millions <laughs> um, a year. Yeah, go on and get that done. But take your time, do it at a local community college, take it all online and do a class or two um, a semester and eventually get that done and then make your job reimburse you for all that college hours. Super easy way to, to move up the chain of command, yeah. But you don't need it, not at all. Hey, Kimberly, we're going to get you to pass too. Mattis, yeah, is in the heart and lungs. Yes, we're in the good general area, area for sure. Can you explain right and left modifiers? Are they necessary for surgery codes? When are they not? A lot of times... Um, the parentheticals will tell you whether you need it or not. So if we are doing, there's a lot of them in urinary and in muscular skeletal. A lot of times if we're bilateral or if we're unilateral, the parentheticals are going to tell us whether we need to use it or not. And that's where we find a lot of our information. It just depends. Let's see, let's, I know our eyes have a lot of them, too, whether we're doing right and left. And the best way to figure it out is to go through those practice exam questions and when you find one that is specifically right or left, then you write that example in your book. So we have flashing lights and floaters in the right eye. How would we code it? Right here we're gonna go use the 67145. Now, did they use the RT? code? No, they didn't. We didn't have to. So if we go to the 67145, which is right there, we didn't have to use the RT, which is super helpful to know, because how would you know? Now, the problem is we may need it for regular in real life billing. It depends on your payer what they want, but AAPC will randomly make it necessary and then randomly not make it necessary. You need to be making notes based off AAPC practice questions specifically, not anybody else's. That's why I like using Pocket Prep and I like using their own practice questions if you're sitting for the CPC, but because you want to know how to code the way they want you to code, but it will be different when you're in real life because different payers, Cigna will want the RT, but HealthNet won't want it, and they'll um, deny the claim if you try to put it on there. So it's all dependent on the payer. So that's the fun part once you get out into real life. But what I teach is specifically what AAPC wants. My goodness. What in the world was that? Okay. I'm still trying to figure out how to get this background off. I don't know if I can. I have no idea. Okay. Daisy, if you're talking about getting books right now, then you probably won't be ready to take the exam before the end of the year. So what you're going to need to do is hold on let me see if I can no how do we interact enhance um, I want no no ooh I got diamonds I don't know 
Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to get off this. All these ghosties, they're like super distracting to me. But I don't know if I'm going to know how to. Share, enhance, effects. Is that an effect? <gasps> there we go. I figured it out. Oh my God. Whew, that had my, my brain was rolling on that. Okay. Okay. Off. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> that was loud. It was like loud. You know, I could hear it in my ears, whatever that was. Yay. Got it off. Okay. Yeah, sometimes they do confuse you. If it's not in the answer, if it's in the answer, it's going to be in a parenthetical if we're supposed to use it, which is the nice thing. So if we're supposed to know whether we're going to use it or not, because this code or that code is in a particular question, it will be right there in the par parenthetical that says to use modifier 50 or 51. There's a reason why AAPC picks the codes they do. So if we're supposed to use it, they'll definitely have a parenthetical that says to use it. So that's super helpful. Usually used on skin, but also eyes. Yes. Who's that? Who's that? Hey, Balloon. Good to see you. Third attempt's coming up soon for Douglas. When scheduling your exam, how long do you have to wait for the first opening? Can you take it as soon as next week on average? If you want to do it online, yeah, you can take it next week. If you want to take it in person, sometimes you have to wait or you have to go to another facility that's giving out a test um, several hours away from home. So it just depends on what's available. All right, guys. Let me um, put this stuff down. I was working on CKD notes today. So to answer your question about what books to get, because I flitted off of that question super quick. Um, since you're asking me what books to buy, I'm assuming you're not going to be prepared to take your exam in 2022. You're going to be needing to get 2023. This is the first book you need to get is the AMA CPT. You can get it through Amazon with free shipping. If you buy it from AAPC, they're going to charge you $25 to $28 to ship it to you on top of the cost of the book, which is crazy. So um, get it from Amazon. They're shipping out this week or next week. Next week, they're um, CPT books. So um, go order this one. And then you need a study guide from AAPC. Mine is from 2019 and has the same practice exam questions as 2022. Um, but you need an AAPC, CPC certification guide. Google this. Switch your search to shopping after you Google it. Find a bookstore, a random bookstore that might have one. I don't care what year. Uh, for sale that will ship it to you free for like 40 bucks or less. And get you one of these. It's better than their online course. It's full of information. If you read and pay attention to every sentence and make notes of what's in this workbook all the way through, plus put the practice exam questions in your brand new book, that's a really great start. Then you're going to need an AAPC ICD-10 book and a HIPPIX book, but you can worry about all that later. First thing is you're going to need this, this sucker because you're going to have to go through every single page and make notes on all. How many pages is it? A thousand pages? Yeah, we got to work on a thousand pages first. And that's going to take you some time. All right. What did I put up here? What year did I put up here? That's 2022. Let me put up this one. All right. And let me get 
put down my laptop and my questions that I have for tonight. Yeah, MK and I were working on one on Tuesday. That was that one was crazy. That one was fun. She's really good at stopping me and going, okay, but why? And I'll say something and she's like, okay, but why? <laughs> she might have to say it a couple of times for me to start explaining the real reason why that she's really asking because my brain goes from one thing to another. But yeah, I finally explained this one to her. That one was neat. This one, these codes, not this code, it's not this one. Which one was it? It wasn't that one. I forget which one it was. It was the 47 one, right? It was the 47 one. Okay, but why? Okay, but why? It was the 47 one. I did the TikTok on it today. It's around here somewhere. I know it's on, no, it's on cardiology. That's why it was cardiology. This one, because these catheters are in the chest, and then these catheters end up in the leg, and then this one is bilateral radiology thing, and this one's unilateral. So. Yeah, that one was a good one. You just needed to find out which one was tibia and popliteal. And if you know anything about anatomy, you know those bones or areas in your prefixes are in your legs. So when you looked at this one and you looked at its mother code, which was the 15, you would have seen this was in the chest and trunk area where these are in the leg area. So that's how you tell the difference. All the rest of this question is garbage and you don't need to know it. These are the only two words you needed out of that question. So that was fun. But she, she really had to ask me like three times. I don't understand. Tell me again why. And then finally I figured out what she needed me to say. So y'all can thank her for really wanting to know exactly why the answers were one code versus another one. All right, I am here. Now I got to find my start for my questions for tonight. And they go through all of those. We did these. We did do these. Where's the one we to start out for tonight? I think this one's it. I don't have any marks on it. So I think this is the last integmentary one that I had. It's a case that I wanted to do. And then we'll do some immunization ones. And let me, I'm on a different crane. So let me see if I can't get this to focus in better for you guys. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> she has the patience of a saint. Yep. And we are gonna tutor again on Friday. All right. It's really neat when you have somebody that's not a basic coder that they really do know what they don't know and they're able to challenge me instead of taking what I say and go, yeah, 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 I'll figure it out later um, and not just agree with me, but then stop me. And I can tell when somebody's ready to pass is when they stop me and question me for sure. <laughs> MK is going to so pass this time. I know she is. You're awesome. 
you have a lot of patience for me too. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So for this one, they are going to ask us what level are we going to bill? We know we're doing intigmatary. So what do you think? Just guessing without even doing anything else and knowing anything else about what we're doing. We know we're doing something in intigmatary. Would we be minimal, low, moderate, high? What do you guys think? Just as a guess. How many do I have? I don't know how many I have in on the live. Hmm. Low or moderate? I like those. I like those. So that just kind of like gets you down to 50%, you know, and that's helpful if you think about the questions that way at first is what would be my guess? So my differences here are first headers before CPT code descriptors. Can't say that enough. My header for the O3 is new patient, right? My header for 214 is established. What's my header for 99243? What's the header for 99243? Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the 12 shares. Be sure and hit the follow button. And then Sometimes, like, you can click on my profile, and then there'll be a little dangly bell at the top. If you change the setting right there, it'll alert your phone when I go live so that you can pop on when I do. Consults, perfect. And then we've got a none. If we were going to bill an intigmatary with an e and &M, does that information help you to get you down to a 50-50 here on the second question? Because you know you're going to need something, right? If you're going to bill an office visit with an intigmatary, what do you need? Yes, their hit picks questions are quite challenging. I even quit doing them or reading them myself because I was just like, oh, I'm done with hit picks. There's just so many questions on hit picks. They do a good job on that pocket prep, don't they? So keep at it. I know the CPC exam only has five questions on hit picks, but pocket prep's got the questions on hit picks for sure. Yeah, it's about modifiers. So that information is super helpful. You could probably get rid of this and get rid of that. And all we need to know is if they're new or, or we're doing a consult. Because we're going to need this if we're going to bill it. Unless we're not billing a, for the office visit at all. Remember, if you're going to bill for an e &M, we need to have a history taken. We need to have a full exam on the body done. And we need to make a decision, an MDM. If all they came in for was a procedure, then we might not bill any. So that might be a consideration. But if we are going to bill an office visit with it, we need to have three components, right? Now, on these, you know, I like looking for similarities. It's not 100% cell face self face face well, I don't know what I'm trying to say but it's not a hundred percent all the time but 90 percent of the time plus it is a wonderful technique um, if 
you have the same answer down twice, there's an, a reason for it. But if codes are super close, there's usually a reason for that. That's why I like to look for the 20 and the 25. I'll go look at those two differences before I will even look at the question. See what those differences are. See what the header is. And then I'll search my question to make sure first, am I under the right header? Should I be at these codes or should I be somewhere else? And then I'll think to look for my CPT code descriptor differences if I'm in the right header. So if I go to 160, what header am I under? 160. Dressing and debridement. 160. Burns and local treatment. Burns and local treatment is my header. Then my differences between the 20 and the 25 are 5%, less than 5% or more than 10, more than 5%, yeah, to 10, yeah. So it's just a percentage of the body that was messed with. So... What do you think? If we're doing burn debriefment, are we low or moderate? We can go back and look at this again now that we know a little something about the CPT codes. That's kind of interesting. It depends on how much. If it's 5%, a little bitty thing, it could be low. But if it's 10%, yeah, that'll be moderate, right? All right, let's check out and see if we can find a percentage and if we did debriefment of a burn. So I'm going to blah, 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 blah. I don't care about all that. Who they are and what's going on. Do we have a percentage or anything written down? Not at all. Oh, less than 5%. Looky there. Sometimes they'll do numbers, and sometimes they'll do words, so I always look for both first. I haven't even looked at this question, so we know we're going to be a 20, right? Now, where are they at? What's their status? Who are they with? Who's seeing them? Did they get consulted and referred out, or are they at their PCP? Do we know? Does say she's coming in for the first time. What does that tell you? New patient. I like our A. How many, did we make a decision? Did we do a body and exam? Did we take a history? Look at this right here. No hospitalizations. We have a history. So we're checking off those points to be able to bill an E&M too. So just seeing that history taken makes me even more confident about that new patient visit. Yep. Less than 5%, and we're billing a 3. A 3 is which level? Low or moderate? It doesn't much matter about the location of the debriefment at all, MK, because our differences are the 20 and 25, which only ask about anything over 5 goes to 25, anything less than 5 goes to 20. So we were told that the debriefment was less than 5, right? So that's really the only thing we need to look for. We didn't really need to look for a body part, I don't think. And yes, our O3 is a low. So let's see if we got this right. We got C, 
A and A, maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's go see. Hope y'all can see all of this. I don't know if I got it too low on these. There we go. All right. We did get a C. We did get an A. And we did get an A. Very good, guys. There's your rationale if you need it. Silvadine, that stuff's great for burns. It's great for anything, but it's good stuff. All right. This one's going to be a case for immunizations. I took out the uh, office visits and some modifiers and some diagnoses and just left us with just the vaccines to worry about so that we could concentrate on some new vaccines that we've probably not done for. What should be the first thing you look for in a question when you know vaccines were given? Anybody know what the first thing you look for is? You totally forgot about having 10 cases. Not time on immunizations. And I'm strictly speaking about medicine section. If we're going to be billing in the medicine section for vaccines, what is the one thing I need to know about the vaccines first? Yep. So, I'm on a hint. A hint is, if you're in the 2022 CPT book, that difference is on page 720 and 721. Not how many components. Nope, nope, no allergies. Nope. If we're billing, it's strictly a billing and a code thing, and we're giving immunizations, what is the one billing difference that I need to know about my immunizations? MK got it. Counseling. Was counseling done or not? That is the very first thing. It makes a huge difference, and it can help you get all your exam questions, more than likely, down to a 50-50 if you look this up first. That way you know you've got a much better chance of getting the answer right if you figure out that situation first. So first thing is to figure out is... I will bill a CPT code that ends in 60 if they were counseled. I will bill a 71 if there was no counseling. And they specifically have to say whether there was counseling or not. Just because they see a physician and vaccines were given doesn't mean that counseling was done. It will either have to say the word counsel in the question or it will say advised about risk. And it means about the risk of not getting the vaccine and the risk of getting the vaccine. So it will say risk or it will say counsel. Remember that. And when you're looking at the answers, and then you can go search the question quickly to figure out and see if you've got the words counsel or risk in it, then you can get yourself down to a 50-50 shot. So here's my first one. So right here, I've got a 70 and a 71 and a 71. That means right there, these, quest 
these answers got no counseling. They are just giving vaccines straight up. This one, if it was the answer, that means that the patient was advised of the risk or counseled for the vaccines. So I immediately look for those, and that's super helpful. And then I can just eliminate the ones that are wrong. So we're just looking for the word counsel. Questions or concerns? No. No. Reviewed. Babbles. Assessment. Immunizations given. Return in nine months. I don't see anything about anybody being advised of risk. So I know that one answer I can get rid of. And I don't have to deal with it anymore, at the very least. So that's that's handy dandy, I think. But like I said, you can still see the MD for your wellness exam. And it's not considered a nurse visit. So, yep. This was seen by a doctor, but still given the 71. So that's helpful. The first code is the same. The second code is not. I like the similarities. I'd probably just stick with C and D. But what's our differences between our 90670 and our 90680? For those that want to learn how to code immunizations, 90670 and 80. What's our differences? That's a rotavirus, and then the 70 is a pneumococcal vaccine. What was ordered? Let's go look. Do we see a pneumococcal vaccine ordered, or do we see the rotavirus? Rota is right there, right? Anybody else got a rota? We have a rota right here. We've got rota, rota, rota. What's our 70? Our 70 is, we said it was pneumonia. Was pneumonia PCV13 given? Was that one given? Right there. That one was given too. The 70? That one was given it's not in C and D, which is our similarities, which I probably would have thought were the answer. But since our pneumonia is here and our rota is here, our answer's got to be A. And I would move on. I wouldn't deal with anything else. This code is for the first immunization given injectably. So are these. This one is for an oral vaccine. Was one given orally? The 7-4 means oral. Let's look at our order. We can verify that too. Look, orally, right there. Huh. Very cool. So yeah, A is our answer. That big dog up there. Sorry, we're on page 725. Did y'all find them all? Now one thing, I, and they were talking about components and stuff, and those are things that you need if you're billing a 60. If you do bill 60 and you need to know how many components there are in vaccines that is something that will or might come across on an immunization. You need to go through all these vaccines and stuff that I have on under like 90670. I have the manufacturer's name of that vaccine, which is called Prevnar, down. And then I have that it is also one component. 
The other vaccine we were dealing with was what number? Rotavirus. The 90680, I have also down that it is one component. And I have Rota written down underneath that CPT code so that I have that name. Because if you look at just the CPT code descriptor, it does say rotavirus vaccine prevalent, RV5. But you want to make sure you understand that they have specific names like this Combavax, the DTAP one. You want to put that one under its code, and that's going to be the 90744. 90744 is on, no, that's the hepatitis B. Is that the hepatitis B? That's the hepatitis B. Our hepatitis B was, was that one. That's it right there, hepatitis B. You want to have that abbreviation right there, HBV, so you, when you do see it, you'll know it. This one's our tetanus and diphtheria, this one right here. 90698. 9698 is our Comdivax. 9698 is on page 725 also. And it has five components with it. And I wrote that manufacturer name underneath it too. So you're going to want to make sure you do the research and put the manufacturer's name, the components down on them. I have a printout of that in our Discord group where you can find it fairly fast. Let's see, we go to the, go to the Discord group and if we go to the CPT code resources room, it shouldn't be too far back there. I think I recently reposted it or something, but there's a page in here where it goes through and shows you the CPT code, how many components are in it. Oh, yeah. And then what their manufacturer names are. Other people post stuff in here, too, so it's kind of cool. But it'll be in this room somewhere. Show you what it looks like as soon as I get there to it. It's going to be too far back. At least I don't think so. But you're going to want to do that for all the vaccines. Or just to get a copy of my notes where it's written out for you. But I tell you, you can do this yourself. There's the CPT code. Then you got your manufacturer. You don't need that. But what you do need is their names right there. Those names. Pediavax. All that little names right there. You need those written out beside them. Pentel. Mm -hmm. And then this side tells you how many components each one has in it. And that'll come in handy if you ever have to do a 60. Um, a question where counseling was done. Because you have to bill for counseling for every single one of the vaccines. So that were given. So like on this DTAP, IPV, and Hib, this is diphtheria, and they get a point for that. This one is tetanus, and they get a point for that. This is pertussis, they get a point for that. This is polio, they get a point for that. And this is uh, Hib, they get a point for that. So in total, they get five points for that. If they do counseling, and that's how many times we get to bill the 90460, 90460. If we only did, you know, that code, we get to times it by however many. We'll do this one by three, and then we would do the 61 code by two to get the, um, the total of five listed. But I'll show you that in another question. But that's really important if you don't have that kind of stuff down. And this is what it looks like. It's just a component with the manufacturer name. It's easy peasy to put in there. You just got to go do the research and get it in there. I hope that's not too, too rough.
Did you find it sooner, girl? Hey, go kart. It's all on Discord. Yep, 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 yep. Wonderful. Yes. The chart and my notes, it's all helpful. So A is our answer. Here's your rationale on this one. In case you love reading their stuff and how they code stuff. Orally means 74 was done. Yep, yep, yep. No counseling was done, so we didn't need to add up components, which is great. Love those questions. It's like winning the lotto. All right. Another case. So what's the first thing we're going to look for? You're welcome, Sooner. Is medical billing different than coding? It is because coding, you got to worry about different payers, which have different guidelines. So Atna will want you to bill one way, but Blue Cross Blue Shield will want you to bill a different way. Billing is different. Billing is different for sure. Counseling. Good job, guys. Yep. So let's see. We've, uh, we've got three again that have no counseling. We're probably not doing any counseling, right? We've got one answer with counseling. So let's just check our question real quick. See if we can eliminate it. Heck, if it does say risk and counseling was done, then we know what the answer is without doing anything. And that's lovely when that happens so let's go look 13 year old drugs dogs seat belts entering the ninth grade return in one year i don't see any counseling done no word counseling and no word risk so we know we can get rid of c c's gone so we're down to one in three chance so that's good so let's just take it one step at a time. These codes are the same. Those codes are the same. Here we've got a difference between this 90649. It's not in one of the answers. What code is that? 90649 is 4. Gardasil. Was Gardasil given? Let's see. Was Gardasil given? Varicella, Minactra, and HPV. This only has two answers given because these are for the billing for the syringes. So this only has two vaccines given. And I'm showing one, two, three vaccines given. So I know D is out. So we definitely have our Gardasil in there. Then my only difference is knowing whether to bill, what's going on here? Uh, this 73, is that a code? 90473, the heck is that? That is for an immunization, immunization given in the nose. Did any of these va vaccines get given in the nose uh, nasally? Or all of these administered intermuscularly. This one's given sub Q, by the way, even though they didn't tell you. Varicella and um, MMR are both given sub Q. Menactra and HPV are given in the muscle. But I don't see anything given in the nose, nasally. So... A is out. So our answer has to be B. Yep, flu can be given in the nose. Isn't there something else? I guess it's just flu. Do we have an RSV that's given in the nose? Probably not. 
just flew. Yeah. Okay. Anybody know what this abbreviation means? P F S. Just seeing. Anybody know what PFS stands for? Not past. It's pre. <laughs> Good job, user. Patient financial services. Nope. I'm still dealing with vaccines. So that's a hint. It still has to do with vaccines. There you go. Pre-filled syringe. Very good. Good job. Some vaccines come in pre-filled syringes and some don't. I've been slowly adding that information in on some of these codes. Because like 90674 is a pre-filled syringe. Where 90672 is a nasal sprayer. So kind of neat to know which ones are pre-filled syringe and which ones are multi-dose vials or something like that. But um, I've given vaccines for decades to adults and children, and I do recommend any time you do get a vaccine, if you can ask for a pre-filled syringe um, version of whatever you're getting, like the flu vaccine specifically, it's often better to do that than it is to get a multi-dose because you put a human in charge of drawing up your dose or inverting a bottle to mix doses and draw it up themselves in a syringe and you introduce the probability for errors just because we're human. We all make mistakes and you don't know who had hold of that bottle before you and if there's a multi-nurses station where multiple people are drawing from syringes for multi-dose vials um i've just always i've i'm too much of an auditor i've always wanted the pre-filled syringe if the manufacturer makes the mistake on their part then it's on the manufacturer but you throw one big multi-dose vial at a nurse's station and it gets passed around between 10 people they all draw up things differently and they all shake vials differently meds do or don't get mixed up in one way or another just personal advice ask for a pre-filled syringe because they usually have those types of doses plus one more thing you don't get when they're in pre-filled syringes is preservatives. So you don't need any preservatives if it's in a pre-filled syringe. 5 a.m. My goodness. Too much coding. Oh, your head's about to explode, dear. All right, let's move on to our next one. There's our answer, which is B. For sure, and your rationale on that one. What have I got? I got another case on vaccines. We're going to go look and see for counseling, right? Let's see. Do any of them? We do. We've got two that have counseling and two that do not. Love it. That's going to get us down to 50-50 really, really quick. So let's check out our question. They're coming in for upset tummy, exam, plan, tummy meds, decrease your calories. Got to love that. Tobacco. Today, with consent, mother offered hepatitis A. Next visit, we'll see in three months. Weight loss and smoking sensation. Do we see any risk 
or counseling done on these vaccines. Anybody see any? I don't either. I love vaccines and all my babies are all vaccinated up, but I did make sure that they get pre-filled syringes. <laughs> hmm. Just have audited too many nurses. Too many. Oh. All right. So we know we're going to be A or B. So our differences are just this middle code. Did we give us 700 or did we give us 715? So let's go look up our differences first. 07, 15, and 00. These codes are just all over the place, aren't they? Seven, that's a tetanus, right? One seven o o. And then the fifteen. Where's our fifteen? Fifteen is okay, so this one is a DTAP and the other one is a DTAP also. Differences are they both have three components. One of them, seven or older. The other one is less than seven. It's just an age difference. So the OO is for somebody younger than seven, and it's also called Daptacel or Infrarex is the manufacturer names and then the other one the 15 is given to people older than seven and it is called booster x so our patient's age was older right she was older with all that tummy aches and tell her to stop smoking right <laughs> stop eating what who how old where's the exam Wasn't there an age? Routine infant or child? What? Where? How old is this kid? She's 245 pounds. She's got to be older than seven, right? That would be crazy. Do y'all see age in here or am I just going crazy? I know it has to be given the seven plus, but I'm just wondering where is her age listed here? Oh my gosh. See you in three months for weight loss and stop smoking. It's got to be somebody over than seven, but all I've got is a weight. And I've never met a seven year old at 245. So, yeah, let's pick our A. And go on with our day. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. No enlarged liver. Mm. All right. Yes. A is our answer. Plus, Minactra is only given to somebody over 12 years old anyway because it's um, a vaccine for teenagers because they start sharing pipes and stuff like that. So you, you don't want them to get meningitis. So, yeah. Anyway, they have to be over 
over seven. Just missing an age from that question. <laughs> and without counseling. The code for Menactra. That's your 90734. Right there. Yep, yep. All right. That's it for all the cases. I got um, a new E&M visit that I've not done. So this one is just a difference between established patients. We've either got moderate or high. The two components that we can use to bill these are either MDM or time. So I'm only, I don't care who they are, what they're being seen for, I'm just looking for their decision making or an amount of time that was used to see the patient. That's all I'm checking for on this question. Don't be reading these questions from beginning to end or you'll never pass that CPC exam. Just skim for a time or MDM being dressed. Do we see either one of those? I see a moderate decision making. Also see a total time of 60 minutes. What do you de do when they're competing? Moderate goes with 14, but time will go with your 15. What do you do when they're competing? Yes, you're going to need the 2023 books, dear. I'm sorry to say. Last year, we only had 250 codes update, and I had a million people pass with the 2021 books, and I didn't care, and that was perfectly fine. But we're going to have over 2,500 new CPT codes. The only... Yeah, we're, the, you're going to have to have a 2023 book, unfortunately. There's just no way to update that and turn it into a 2023 book. It's just too many codes. Last year, I let people update their 2021s into 2022 code book, and we were able to add those codes if it was necessary, but there's no way, I don't think. We're going to have to have new books. Yep, our time trumps our MDM, and we have a parenthetical underneath our 99215 that says if we're over 54 minutes, we have to use our 417. Yep, so we know D is our answer. You know... And, and in years past, I didn't think that the exam changed on January 1st, like AAPC says. And I would get feedback from people and they would report that they didn't have any problems passing with prior yearbooks up until March or April. Then it seemed like, especially in April, that the exams do change and they really needed those updated notes or books from that month on. But AAPC has been more proactive than in prior years about updating the exam sooner. And they just did an update on October 1st for the online exam. And which seems to have changed from even September's exam that was online. So I'm worried. I'm worried to death. But until somebody takes the exam in January with a 2022 book, I have no idea if it's going to, if you could be okay or not, or if you're going to need that updated book. 
I don't work for them. I'm just a guest educator for them. Um, I don't know. And I hate for you to put my word on it that you can take it in January and then the exam change. They specifically say they change it on January 1st. I've never seen them do that. Doesn't mean they won't do it this year. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody needs to be first. Somebody will be first, and we will get reports back. To be safe, I wish you could, but if you're not ready, you're not ready. But if you can get ready, then do so. I'd, I'd hate for you to have to buy another set of book and spend another 80 hours updating when you're already ready right now. So if you're ready, take your exam. Yes, yes. If, if you're not ready, then cool your heels, get you a 2023, and let's start in on that 80 hours. We're going to need to get that book updated. I know. It's so hard. We are reviewing CPT codes for the 2022 year right now. You forgot to fill out the the bubble sheet. I know that bubble sheet is when you take it in person, you have your exam booklet, you have your CPT, hip picks, ICD-9 books, and then you've got an answer booklet. And then if you don't bubble in right or you skip answers and then you get your bubbles all wrong, oh my gosh, it can be it can, it can it's a nightmare. You really need to practice. One of those books Somebody's practice book. Whose book is it? Hold on. Hold on. If you can get you some practice Scantron cards, you know, and practice bubbling in crap as you're doing practice questions, that's pretty cool. Somebody's study book has it. I'm not through auditing it all yet, so I'm running around my room looking for it here. Hold on. Let's see if I found it. Now, it's not a Scantron card, but you know, you, you guys have seen this book advertised on Amazon or whatever. I have not looked at it yet, but you do bring up a good point about it. Now, in the back of their book, they do have... They're not bubbles, but they have a practice worksheets that you can circle, I guess. You know, if you get nervous about every little step, even down to remembering to bubble the right bubble numbers and could do something wrong, you can print you off some Scantron practice sheets at the library, at home, anywhere, whatever. And you, you should practice with bubble sheets. Absolutely. And this book has them. Now, I can't recommend their study questions. I don't like them. I don't... They're not... I mean, how helpful is that? That's not a CPC exam questions. Yes, you got the codes... But, you know, their questions are full of crap and propaganda. This, this, isn't, this isn't helpful. That's just straightforward in one sentence. And I don't like straightforward one sentence ones. I think it should be filled with who they are, what's going on, and a bunch of crap to allude you to the wrong answer, like AAPC. So this is just laziness on whoever's selling this book. And I don't like that kind of stuff. And, and you know, a lot of, I mean, it goes on for days. They're one, three sentence word questions. And I don't, I don't like that. But they do have the practice sheets in the back. So, you know, if I was making up practice questions, God, they would be hard on you guys. And then they would have I would have bubble sheets for you guys to practice with and stuff. It, I would just take forever to build something like that for me because I'm too much of an auditor. So, so I haven't gone there yet, but yeah. 
what does it say? Um, no more grid sheets. Greed sheet, sheets. What is bad is that I'm sure I would have passed. I'm sure you would have too. You've been working really hard on that. I think the online exam is a better way. You can scroll down in person. Plus, your question is on your on your computer screen. And before you hit next, you click on the answer, A, B, C, or D. And then you move to your next question after you answered it. So you can't bubble in the wrong one unless you just click on one that's the wrong one. So, yes, I love the online exam. AAPC has a bubble sheet you can print out. That's awesome. Yeah, Sunshine posted in the AAP in our, in our Discord group. People can grab it and print it out. That would be awesome if you have time to do that. I was so close in my last exam. I would have passed on my exam C if I hadn't taken too long. That exam C is rough, though. I hope you like the online exam and guidelines in anatomy. Which one do you reckon? I like doing the first time you take it in person. That way you can highlight codes that are on your exam in your books as you're doing it. Plus, with the um, in-person exam, you get to take a pen and you get to draw on your exam booklet just like I do and figure out which codes you can get rid of and then you can keep track of which ones are the just the differences and then go look at the books go look at the differences I just I like writing little things like established or new patient or this one's a consult whatever I like being able to write and clearly get rid of things. The online exam, you can't do any of that. You can't bring a dry erase board and mark on your computer screens anymore. They won't let you bring a dry erase board to work on on the side of your computer anymore. They will only allow you your desktop computer screen and a mouse, and that's it. You can't take any highlighters. You can't mark anything in your book. You can have a drink cup and that's it on your desk and your computer screen. So I think it's more challenging when you can't mark out answers and you have to remember, oh, yeah, it's not this one. It's this one. Um, you have to do all of it in your head. You can't use a drawing tool. I really wish and I think we all should email AAPC at AAPC.com and beg for a drawing tool on the online exam so you can just draw on the exam and mark out things. They give you a notepad that you can type on, but how I typing, not even on the exam, it opens up another little window. Typing something isn't going to help me unless I can type it right here and write hospital code or consult or whatever. But if enough of us bug them and email them, then they'll eventually get you a drawing tool. I think something like that. They could just get you anything that you could use to draw on it. And I think that's a big a disadvantage if you're new at this and you want to go through step by step, code by code like I do and draw out things and just get rid of answers so you don't have to forget about them. I wish they had a draw tool. It's my only drawback, but I thought the questions were smaller, more straightforward because they needed to get them all on one screen. And I love, I've worked from home since 2013, so I'm used to being alone and perform better independently than I do in a group of people because I'm always too worried about everybody else and are they okay than I am when I'm by myself. So I, I can concentrate much better on my own at home, but I like to audit things around other people. So I like the two exam tries. Try your first one in person so you can draw out things. You can highlight things in your CPT book. If you highlighted every possible answer that was on your exam while you're taking it, each code, whether it was ICDDN, CPT, or HIPPICS code, 
If you don't pass, you've got the whole exam highlighted, at least the answers, possible answers, and then you can audit those codes, see what the differences are, write those differences down, and then go take the exam again with your notes, and you should do a whole lot better that way. So I recommend taking it both ways, really. Take it in person first without the stress of, you know, I've, if I'm really not going to pass, then I've got at least the codes and I know what which codes they tested me on. And then uh, if you do pass, then great. If you don't, then take it in online. All right, let's see. Yes, you can write on the test booklet when you take the exam in person. How much is the exam? Uh, they have varying prices. You can buy one attempt for one price and then two attempts at another price. You have to check AAPC's website for all that. For practice, I only recommend their own official study guide from AAPC. If you're going to do any certification from AAPC or AHIMA, then um, I recommend their own study guide. They have their own workbook study guide. You don't have to get current year. You can find a cheaper one online from a different year. But that's the study book I would do. If uh, you're doing a HEMA, a HEMA has a great study book uh, for CCS and CCA that I love. And it's written by them. So stick with whoever's doing your certification by their material. Somebody just enrolled in something for medical coding. I hope it helps you out a whole bunch, beauty. Yes, this one is from the practice exam quiz, like D, I think it is. It's just one that I had not done because I've not done a total of a 60-minute time. Uh, before, I've done one that was 55 minutes from their practice exam, but this one was a new one that I hadn't gone over yet. So, you got all those memorized. <laughs> yeah, you can write all you want in your book. I know it is ridiculous. For sure, ridiculous. Working as a coder, is there a lot of... Yeah, if you are a coder right now, that knowledge that you have can hurt you when you go to code the way AAPC wants you to code. Um, they're not payer-based. They are guidelines strictly based, which the payers don't go by. So in some things, they have you bill are just known things that you would never code. Like I've seen them have practice exam questions that are asking you what level visit you bill for a regular office visit, a 12, a 13, or a 14 on a patient that got sent to the ER for admit. That's something you would never, ever, ever bill, ever. You won't code that. They, You can't bill for that office visit. But yet they want you to on the CPC exam. So some of that stuff is, is harmful for you. But hopefully a lot more stuff is easier for you if you do have real life experiences. Yep, typing will take a lot of time. Drawing tool is so easy. Thank you, Mr. Lovett. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you, thank you. I love self-study. That's exactly what I did. I didn't want to take a course. I, in fact, didn't want to learn how to do coding. I don't need it for my job. I'm a medical auditor, but I'm not a coder. And I don't need to code for my job. So I never wanted to get a CPC for my job. I just did it because we had some downtime during COVID that my audits got canceled. And I was spinning my wheels, needing some stimulation. So I figured... I just want it just to be wanting it. Not that I want to ever be a coder or a biller. No, 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 no. But so I self-studied. 
and I immediately took the exam in person just so I could highlight the codes, audit the exam from the exam point of view so that when I took it in online and really meant to pass, I would know exactly how to answer the questions from the exam point of view, not from a coder's point of view or to know how to code. I didn't want to learn how to do that. And I think me teaching you guys how to code well or how to answer the questions on the certification exam from the exam point of view is beneficial because their courses absolutely do not teach you how to pass the certification exam. And in fact, they are meant to be totally separate and the certification, um, the coding courses are not meant to help you pass the certification exam. That's a totally different entity. How do I practice after passing my exam on, on office? I don't understand what that means. Hey, Kenza, good night. I know you got to go. What time is it? Self-study is the way to go. Self-study on medical terminology. Get my document about what's been on the exam in the last 45 days, either on Etsy or my website. It's got all the vocabulary terms you need to know anatomy-wise or compliance-wise that you need on that document. Just know those vocabulary terms that are on it. Everybody's been making 100% on their certification exams on those just by knowing those. Later, what did it say? Oh my gosh, go down. Later when I take my class through MA course, I was fully prepared and got a 98 on my exam. Good job. Thank you, Twinkle. Will the medical industry become technically one day? meaning no more humans to code? Absolutely not. We will always need humans. Humans humans are needed to build the software to check for auditing or billing or coding errors also. I've been offered, I can't tell you how many jobs, to be a super user for entities like Epic um, or other EHRs or data warehouses. There's so many coder positions, even for building software. You can be a coder that just works in software that's being developed, and you audit their system for them and make sure it runs right, or show other people that are buying their product how to use it. And your only qualification is that you need to be somebody that knows about the codes and knows how to code to help the offices figure out how to get the codes in the right spot in their electronic system. So, no, we will never be replaced. No, 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 no. And we in the United States are so far behind the UK and every other country in this planet because we don't have a health system for our population. We're not taking care of our population health-wise universally like all the other countries are. Just look how many coders are in Dubai right now or over in uh, the UK. They are way far advanced in their computer and electronic and tracking systems than we are. They have a universal pay system and everything, and they're not getting rid of any of their coders anytime soon. That's where you get all your direction from. I met a lady whose girlfriend is in the medical coding and I asked about the job and she said her told her that. What area of coding pays the most? Risk adjustment right now. If you can be a risk adjuster, which a CPC can do, you will make I mean, I was just showing off something today. There was 110 grand a year from somebody who just passed their CPC. Um, it's risk adjustment is where you can go because every medical doctors group um, all need to st are getting paid 
by the health plans to take care of their population and by the health plans so the health plans can save money. So then the medical group need to take care of their population by risk adjusting them, finding their sickest patients and getting them resources so that they're not the sickest anymore. The more money they save, at the end of the year, they get to recoup what they didn't spend on heart transplants, lung transplants, and all that other stuff. So... California instituted it, and now it's spreading across the United States. So if you can risk adjust, you can work from home and easily make a ton of money if you can risk adjust. I do do, uh, yes, on my, not on my website, but in our Discord group. If you join our Discord group, which is free, we have anatomy right here. A whole room full of anatomy practice exam questions, cue cards, whatever else you need. ABC, you know, I have multiple choice questions in here, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, we have a whole room full of it. We have a room for ICD-10. I show you how I make my notes. We have practice exam questions just for anatomy in here. Oh yeah, we do it all. All of our different rooms all have exam questions in them. E&M, CPT, ICD-10, hit picks, all that stuff. So, yep, 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 yep. We got all that. Did you say that once you purchase your document, what's been on the exam last 45 days. Yep, I'll email the update. Yes, my last update was September. I have not updated it since then. Um, not a lot of people have been telling me what's on their exam. I do have a new one. Somebody told me on Messenger the other day a few items that was on her exam. Uh, where is her screenshot? I have one person that I need to add to the document, but not a lot of people have been telling me what's on there. I do know that... What was that thing I said yesterday about... Um, it was Monday. The link between CKD and hypertension... That's been on the exam. Somebody's told me that four times this month. Um, what else? I have a screenshot of somebody on Messenger, but I only have one person so far that told me anything that was on there. I had one lady who took it online who wrote me a big, long paragraph saying, that the exam online drastically changed in October and she dictated to herself what was on the exam uh, right after she took it and she said she'd write it down and let me know and I haven't seen that yet. This is her, Jessica. I'm waiting on her to give me those voice memos of what she said was on the exam. Um... But really, I haven't had a lot of people take it and tell me any new info. So, last time I updated it was in September. If you haven't received any updates, um, if it was, if you, you, you have to make sure your email address is correct. If you used Apple to log on to, um, to, um, my website with a fake email address or onto Etsy with a Apple ID that isn't an email address. I can't give you the email updates and I can't individually find people and, and then add you to the list because I generate the list off the sales and just print out the emails and add that to an email chain and blind copy everybody and um, 
it's just done off the sales. So whatever email address you use, if you use something that isn't a real one, then you won't get any updates. So that's the unfortunate one, unless I manually get an email from you and am able to respond and reply back and then manually attach it and send it to you individually. But if I have to do that for everybody, it's going to, yeah, I have Twinkle to help me. <laughs> Other than that, it's just me and 14,000 of you. Uh, is that the only if you purchased it on your website or Etsy? It's both ways, both both places. What do you mean? Her manager says he doesn't want people to make mistakes, and he's already had a lot of blunders. Due to weak eyesight. That's funny because on computers, you know, if you, if any EHR that you're looking at, look, I can shrink and I can increase the font to whatever I need to. Even in an EHR, you can make the font bigger. There's a way to do it no matter what you're, what you're dealing with. You, you whoever's, I mean, instead of him complaining about the performance on his staff who have told him that they're having an eyesight issue, he should fix the issue by increasing the font for whoever the staff member is. That's, that's silliness. I don't know. People just, like, put up walls, and then they don't expect any troubleshooting to go on. I don't know. That's just silliness. Silliness, silliness. You can fix your font size, even on your cell phone. Does risk adjustment coders require additional certification? No, you can get a CPC and risk adjustment. As soon as you get your CPCA, you can get on with Optum, and they will hire you right out of the gate working from home. Work for them for a year and risk adjust, get your feet wet, learn it all, and then uh, move on to any job you want. Absolutely. They do have a certification for risk adjustment if you want it, but you don't have to. Okay, sorry. I'm just getting the font back down. Let's see where we at. Okay, we did that question. What else do I have? Do I have any other questions? Oh, I got a time for anesthesia. So... Let's do time. There's no coding in this question. You just need to tell me, are we one hour or are we 45 minutes? That's the first part, and then we'll get down to the codes. How much time do we need to bill for? Besides the study guide, are there any other places to practice? Yes, you need to purchase all of these. Let's see. We need to go here, and we need to go to our purchased items, and we need to go here, and you need to buy... All 300 questions from AAPC. You need to get exam A, B, C, D, E, and F. Go buy those 300 questions. That's enough to keep you busy. Then, where was I at? I was over here. Then, you can come through here and do one at a time. This one's a case. It's number 50. I haven't answered it yet. That's why it's an X. But, this, the last four questions or cases and you need to go through here and answer them. If you have time to do one question, do one question. You can go on and hit the grade and get your rationale. You don't have to answer all 50 at one time. You can go through these and do them one question at a time and hit grade. No one's going to keep track or there's unlimited opportunities to just pick an answer and move on with your day. You know, just pick one and hit grade and then Pick out your rationale and see how you do. And then the ones you do get correct, 
be sure and figure out why they're correct or why they're wrong. Um, if you got codes that are the the right answer, great. Well, why is this the wrong answer? Go look up this code. See why it's the wrong answer compared to what's in the words. Also look up to see why 306 is the wrong answer. And then go look up the 80299. See why it's the wrong answer. Look up every one of the descriptors. See what's right, what's wrong. Then go write at 80178 that that is for lithium, which will be underneath the CPT code, but also go on and write manic depressive disorder underneath that CPT code since you've got a good diagnosis to go along with it and leave it there with it. You should go through all 300 of those questions like that. So start out there before you start looking for other material. This is written by AAPC, who is doing your certification and they are great questions. They spend a lot of time on those suckers. And it's worth your time to really dive into them and uh, find out what's right or wrong. All right. On this one, did we figure out, are we doing one hour or 45 minutes? Thank you, Twinkle. Exactly what you did and how I passed. Awesome, Lolly. Very good job. That's what I'm telling you. You really got to go through those questions. Don't just memorize out the right answer. That's not going to help you. Really dive into it and figure out why is the wrong answers wrong. What's in those CPT code descriptors that's different than the correct answer? Pay attention to those differences and write them out. I've not heard about using Codify on the exam in 2023. I doubt it. I mean, you're not going to be able to open up a laptop and bring something like that with you on an in-person exam. I doubt it. Aw, you're so welcome. I'm so glad I helped in some small way to make a difference in your life. Really, truly, that's why I'm sitting here at 8.30 at night on a Wednesday night instead of out there with my kids or my mom, you know, hanging out with them. I'm wanting to make a difference for you guys, for sure. Uh, whether you buy any notes or not, or uh, do any tutoring or not, I'm here to help you guys, I promise. I'm not here to to just take from you guys. I'm here to offer what I can to make a difference so that you can get a better job, your kids, you know, will live in a better neighborhood or you can better your neighborhood that you already live in and then that'll better all of us. Okay, Chloe, I'm coming. My cat is yelling at me. She's wanting dinner. <laughs> You're welcome, go-kart. So, go are you saying that we're not going to be 45 minutes? So when I see these questions, what I do is immediately go in and I delete anything that says surgery time. I could care less about surgery. All I want to know is when the anesthesia started and when the anesthesiologist ended. So from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. is one hour. So then I can get myself super fast down to a 50-50 shot. Now I just need to know, am I a 22 or a 20? And as she said, yes, 22 is our answer. If you just look up the differences on the CPT code, you'll see right away about the biopsy. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. A lot of my techniques are really, truly tried to get you geared to getting the answers down to a 50-50 shot right out of the bat, um, and then just looking at the differences in the CPT codes. A lot of times to get down to a 50-50 shot, it's just looking at the headers of CPT code groups first before you even worry about the CPT code descriptors that go with the CPT code numbers. 
A lot of times you don't even have to look at these first. You're just looking at this group's worth of a header. New patient, established, laparoscopic versus open surgery. Those kinds of things first before we even get down to just the individual CPT code numbers. And then just take it one thing at a time. If it's the same code for what's left of the answers, then you don't have to look it up. Move on till you find something that is different. The only thing that was different here was one was given with a nasal vaccine. And this one didn't have it. So great. We didn't give anything nasally. They were all given IM. Although this one was given sub Q, they just don't know that because they're not clinical. But anyway, um, that's all you need to do is figure it out one step at a time, one code at a time. Chloe, no. <laughs> She's about to knock over uh, my change jar. She's incessant, getting bad at me. So that change jar right behind her, she was digging in it. <laughs> fixing to knock it off on the ground. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, I got to go feed her and uh, check on the kids and get them ready for bed. They're out of school on Friday. Gosh, dog it for parent-teacher conferences. They're always getting out of school for something. And um, they're out of school an hour early for tomorrow for parent-teacher conferences too, so... Oh boy, and they had an hour off today because they got their pictures taken. I'm like, really? Why? Why? Why does that take an hour off of the day? But it does. <laughs> anyway, oh, I show y'all what my mom got today. It's not coding related, so if you're not curious about my house, don't worry about this. But I hope this has been helpful. Okay, we got we got the this baby today. My mother got it screams and kicks at that creepy witchy lady. She's a nightmare. He got this guy today. He yells for some reason. But this next one looks just like my mother, by the way. She's a lady that crawls. But her black hair and face looks just like my mother. <laughs> anyway, we got her today from the um, Oriental Trading Company or something. She went all out this year for Halloween. My goodness. We've got that scary clown and that witch. Good gracious. And then now that baby doll. Already, my UPS guy has refused to walk up our walkway to our house, and he's setting boxes by the light pole. I'm like, Mom, you're going to have to stop this. We're, we're going to lose some Amazon packages. But anyway, <laughs> I don't blame him not wanting to walk up into our yard. Just throw the boxes at the light pole and leave. <laughs> She got them from the Oriental China, uh, the yeah that inter, yeah trading Oriental Trading Company yeah oh my gosh she is crazy look look that's what she looks like when my mom was you know 20, 30 years old that's exactly what my mom looks like <laughs> but that is her she's so creepy. Oh my gosh, she's wearing a nightgown. Took us forever to figure out where to put the batteries in her. She takes four double A's. <laughs> she is crazy. But anyway, I hope all this has been helpful, guys. I will be back on another live. We'll do some more practice questions on... Um, Friday, we'll do some lab and path. Haven't done those in a little while. Scores have been really good on lab and path until today and yesterday. I saw a couple of scores that were pretty low, but I don't know how long those people have been watching me. So before that, lots of people have been getting 100% on lab and path. So I just got to show those techniques off again. It, remember in lab and path, it's not 
the codes or the test that you're doing, it's what you collected for the test. Am I doing blood? Am I doing an um, um, an immunoassay test versus an enzyme? I know, Chloe, I'm coming. So it's it's what body part or blood, sputum, stool, what did I collect? And then how am I testing it? Is it with a stere- with a strip? Or is it with my eyes? Or is it with a machine? Though that's the differences on that lab and path. It's not the name of the test. The name of the test is going to be everywhere, all over that lab and path book. But how you're testing it is is key there. So anyway, thank you for all the roses and everything, guys, and the shares. I have 15,000 likes. I think that is a new record, guys. Thank you so much. And 15 shares. I will see you guys again on Friday. See you too, MK, on Friday. We got a tutoring session then. Good night.